Thank you for attending today's presentation on how leaders and coaches can effectively utilize virtual coaching to achieve lasting results. My name is Jeff Doolittle. Over the past 25 years, I've helped business owners and executives of small businesses to global Fortune 50 companies, and my work is being taught in university classrooms. I am the founder of Organizational Talent Consulting, a premier executive coaching and business consulting firm. I received my doctorate in strategic leadership from Regent University. I am a certified international federation coach. Also, I am the author of Breaking 10 Leadership Bad Habits, a comprehensive field guide for creating good leadership habits, breaking bad ones, and achieving success and significance in life and work. It is my hope that this viewpoint presentation provides insight that may assist decision makers, leaders, and coaches in effectively utilizing virtual coaching to achieve lasting results. The key points I'm going to be discussing are Coaching doesn't have to be face-to-face -to, -face to be personalized and effective. Skilled coaches can effectively utilize virtual technology to achieve lasting results. And virtual coaching offers added convenience, service, and support benefits over traditional face-to-face -face coaching. Paul, in 1 Corinthians, writes about love, that is, put into action, more than just a feeling or emotion. He states, and now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. When we coach, we demonstrate our love for others. The number of days U.S. employees spend working from home has increased from 1.58 days per week in January of 2021 to 2.37 in June of 2022. A tight labor market fueled by what some are calling the great resignation has employees feeling more confident in making demands of their employers about remote work. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, as shown in this graph, employers are responding by increasing the numbers of remote days they are offering out of concern for employee retention and productivity. Eliminating office space is one way for employers to cut costs. But during a recession, as many are speculating we are heading into, companies make layoffs and typically the labor market shifts from being employee driven to the employer. So, is virtual work here to stay? According to a 2021 State of the Remote Work report from Owl Labs, in a survey of 2,050 full-time remote workers, they indicated they were as productive or more productive working remotely compared to when they were in the office. PricewaterhouseCoopers found that 43% of business leaders plan to keep hybrid work options for employees, and 30% plan on making remote work a permanent option. Nearly 80% of workers are now using collaboration tools for work, up from just over half of workers in 2019, according to the Gartner Digital Work Experience Survey. This is an increase of 44% since the pandemic began. Video conferencing and team collaboration tools be, became must-have investments during the pandemic, and given the wide adoption of collaboration tools and desires of employees to have some days of work from home, it's highly likely that virtual work is not going away. As the world changes, professional coaching has changed and will need to continue to change. The business coaching industry in 2022 is listed at 14.2 billion as measured by revenue. Between 2017 and 2022, the industry has averaged a growth rate of 2.8% per year. And according to a recent survey conducted by the International Coaching Federation, 83% of coaches increased their use of audiovisual platforms for coaching, while 82% in, in, uh, actually decreased for in-person sessions over the course of the pandemic. A more recent ICF Global Snapshot survey found that 87% of coaches believe virtual coaching will continue at a higher rate beyond the pandemic. Both coaching professionals and their clients have adapted to the circumstances of the times with more and more utilizing technology tools for coaching sessions. The COVID-19 pandemic radically changed the industry's verticals across the world and the coaching market was no exception in this regard. Current trends and research suggest that virtual coaching is not going away and for many different reasons. But the question I have, is it effective? A quick Google search on the effectiveness of virtual coaching makes it appear as if virtual coaching is just as effective as face-to-face. -face. 
However, a closer look reveals that most articles are authored by virtual coaching organizations. This presentation draws on peer-reviewed literature to understand what social science has to contribute to the discussion on the effectiveness of virtual coaching. Coaching is one of those words that has different meanings to different people and often gets used interchangeably with mentoring and counseling. Even various thought leaders in coaching have different definitions and perspectives on what coaching is and is not. According to the International Coaching Federation, coaching is a partnership with clients in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. Virtual coaching is often used interchangeably with e-coaching, distance coaching, online coaching, and remote coaching. Like in-person coaching, there are general, there's a general lack of consensus on its meaning. Virtual coaching can include asynchronous communications, such as email, text messaging through virtual coaching apps, and synchronous, such as phone and Zoom communications that provide immediate feedback with a coach. I prefer to think of virtual coaching as a technology-facilitated partnership between a coach and a client to maximize the client's personal and professional potential. The research-based virtual coaching literature is relatively limited, and the research can be placed into three categories. Studies that focus on the change outcomes as a result of coaching, those focused on the process of coaching, and those focused on the technology and its impacts on the relationship and outcomes. Evidence suggests that virtual executive coaching leads to significantly higher transfers of learning, improved goal definition, work-life balance, and clear, clearer priorities. One researcher concluded that clients may take more responsibility and try harder to, harder to communicate when they perceive a barrier. Thoughtfully incorporating virtual coaching has many demonstrated positive impacts, but that does not mean it isn't without challenges. Numerous research studies have shown that different mediums of communication have varying degrees of effectiveness with supporting in-the-moment feedback, information sharing, communication cues, emotions, and customization of the message. This table demonstrates that virtual collaboration tools like Zoom are most effective. It probably goes without needing scientific research to understand that face-to-face -face communication is the most effective. Additional research, however, has identified the challenge was with the lack of multiple cues and sharing of emotions could be moderated by a skilled virtual coach. The foundation of the coach and client relationship is a trust-based and development-oriented relationship. The ICF identifies these eight skilled coaching competencies updated as of 2019 based on empirical data collected over two years from a job analysis of 1,300 coaches globally. A common belief held by the coaches and researchers is that a strong trusting client relationship leads to more successful coaching engagements despite any physical dis distance. A study by Bauer in 2011 found evidence that four levels of competency specific to synchronous collaboration environments directly contribute to the development outcomes. These are operational competencies, which are the ability to operate the tools and functions of the collaborative technology. These are often the easiest to develop. Interactional competencies, these are the ability to effectively interact to perform a task, solve a problem using technology, including effective collaboration techniques and managerial competencies, the ability to manage a team providing support on how to use technology and interact effectively. And lastly, design competencies, the ability to select and organize tools in a way that optimizes interaction and best supports activity management, including the ability to dynamically design the environment based on the emerging collaborative and cognitive requirements. These levels of synchronous collaboration competencies were observed to be hierarchical in nature. Developing your virtual collaboration competence should begin with level one. Virtual coaching offers added convenience, service, and support benefits over traditional face-to-face -face coaching. Accessibility is likely one of the most significant benefits associated with virtual coaching, especially during a pandemic. Technology enables the coach and the client to connect, whether in different places within the same building or worldwide. Availability improves the enabling of the coach to be brought up into just-in-time rapid response needs or unique situations like cross-cultural needs. Virtual coaching allows the coach to increase the number of clients they can support at one time. Also, both the coach and the client benefit from the flexibility of administration and ease in scheduling. 
affordability improves through reduced travel and associated time out of the office costs. Access to resources improves through digital access to tools supporting goal setting, coaching preparation, and progress tracking. The coaching relationships evaluation improves through the ease of tracking commitments, satisfaction, strengths, opportunities, and trends, both on an individual and a client level and at the aggregate organizational level. Although the benefits of virtual coaching are very advantageous, the research does not support replacing face-to-face coaching with virtual coaching. In reality, in-person and virtual coaching both have associated pros and cons. It's best to look at each client's situations and needs uniquely rather than a one-size-fits-all strategy. As concluded earlier, virtual coaching is inevitable. It is best to assess the situation, the coach, the client, the context to determine its best use. Evidence suggests that coaching does not have to be face-to-face to be personalized and effective. So what's next for virtual coaching? What I see being sparked in my coaching and consulting practice as a result is a move beyond the point where we, are, we start with a virtual or not categorization towards a continuum approach of considering virtualization. Also, as a result of the research, I've created a simple virtual coaching fit checker to help leaders self-reflect on the variables that affect when the virtual coaching is their best fit. All right, so looking ahead, as you prepare for the panel discussion, I'd like you to be thinking with me about what new professional coaching opportunities might be created with virtual coaching. What is the future going to look like with all the given advancements in technology? And virtual coaching hacks, which ones do you have that you found particularly effective? Thank you for viewing my presentation. I would welcome the opportunity to connect and discuss this presentation with you. You can use this QR code to schedule a time or a 20-minute virtual networking meeting with me. Thank you. Look forward to talking with you.